Welcome, everyone, to That Kind of Nerds Podcast, a weekly show that tells you what is going on in the nerdy world. I am CJ Mellon, joined by Josh Burns and Brian Thornton. What up? It is I. I am back. Hello. Yay! We're all back together. It's been a while. Uh, if this is your first episode... and it feels so good. I don't care if we have to pay the royalties. I'll do it. If this is your first time uh, listening to the show, I highly recommend you stop what you're doing. Go to intro.thatkindofnerd.com, learn a little bit about us, learn a little bit about the show, and then you can go ahead and dive in head first. Brian, you have no counter suggestion? No episode I need to, to, to reference? Oh, no, I do. I was waiting um, to think of a random number. Um, you know, here I have, I have a suggestion for you. I want you all to uh, go and listen to episode 203. Oh, Whoa. so in wait. the future. Yeah, I want you to go to the future. You want, I want you to wait. You want you to listen to that episode, then come back and listen to this episode. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I don't know how, but I know that episode is called That's Too Much Spaghetti. And you no. Know, <laughs> I really Very need you to follow up on that shit now. You got to write that down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Someone, you like, make a note. Eight months away. It, put a post it. <laughs> That's too much spaghetti. That's too much spaghetti. And I don't care what the episode's about. That's got to be the title. That's got to be the title at this point. All right, well, being that it is a new month, it is going to be the month of November. Brian, right, has just buried himself inside of his basement. And with the will to work hard and a library card, we bring you November's blockbuster, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to tell you what movies are coming out for the month of November. Brian, take it away. Oh, this is me. Every month, this is you, this Brian. This is me. I do this part. This is you every month. And every month, I remind you, it's you. November 2nd is the first Friday of November. There are many things happening on November 2nd, but there are also movies coming out. I don't know what things you have going on November 2nd. Maybe you have a party. Who knows? Could be someone's birthday. I don't know. Someone was born November 2nd. <laughs> but anyway, maybe you'll see a movie after the party. And one of those movies could be Nutcracker and the Forum Wet. Ugh. Let me try that again. Yep. Nutcracker and the Four Realms. Uh, starring, starring R- Renezme, sorry, <laughs> starring green screens and and stuff. I don't give a shit about. Am I? Wait, am I? Am I? It, I mean, this was the baby from from. Uh, this was the little girl from this the was Twilight the Saga, girl right? From Twilight. Mackenzie Foy is her name. Okay. Also stars uh, K- uh, Helen Mirren, Kira Knightley are really the the biggest names in the cast here. It's the Nutcracker, but with action it looks like the I alice mean, in wonderland movies and they were like let's do let we have uh, leftover sets not you glossed right over morgan freeman i completely glossed over Nor- morgan freeman you're correct yeah you, you should and never you should never just as a life decision gloss over morgan freeman well, yeah, Very yeah. True. that's why i i'm, I'm ashamed <laughs> um but hey i mean it looks interesting i have zero I, i'll check it out it's a it's i don't know movie. i mean it seems like the kids might like it right yeah yeah my, why my, not my kids are it's too young PG- to care it's a PG movie. I don't think so, CJ. I think Lily. I think Lily might really like this. I'm gonna watch Trolls for the seven trillionth no, time. I maybe take them to this, and you'll be entertained, and they'll be entertained mm, as well. I, I doubt it. Um, what the kids won't like, and when I say kids, I mean me, is nobody's fool. Uh, that also comes out on November. You like that segue, by the way? It's the catfishing movie. Oh, Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry can just go away. Tiffany Haddish. I don't and think also she's Tiffany funny. Haddish. She can go away, too. Uh, yeah. I don't think she's funny at all. I like, but like, the only thing I like in this is the, is the trailer with Whoopi Goldberg where she opens the window and she's talking to her. And she's like, this connection is terrible. It's like, Mama, this, uh, this ain't no phone. And I'm just like, ha, <laughs> Funniest part of the movie right there. That's it. Right. Yep, so right. moving on to the this movie that it. we are all going to probably want to go see. Oh, for sure. Bohemian Rhapsody about Queen. How much Mercury. does Rami Malek really emulate Freddie Mercury? Seriously. I mean, in oh, those yeah. trailers, he's freaking awesome. So, he yeah. He looks amazing. And they said he had to wear like a a, a mouthpiece to. No, he for sure had to do something with his to, jaw to shape, to shape oh, his yeah, right. to get his shape right. right. Yeah. You know that guy went through a shit ton of pain to look like Freddie Mercury, which means that his performance is just going to be a whole fueled by level. pain. Right. Cannot wait for this uh, to to probably not win any awards because reasons. But this looks well, really good, right? I, I mean, it'll probably I, be well, nominated for plenty be, of awards. I, it's not going to be an Oscar, but you know, look, look like a, like like a SAG award or like they'll a get a Globe. Golden Globe. Yeah, yeah this will get a Golden Globe, right. right? Right. But you know what? Actually, might get an Oscar. Who knows? Maybe best animated film. Doctor Seuss's The Grinch comes out November 9th. 
I don't I know, man. You right. still have the Incredibles to deal with, don't you? Uh, I mean, there's plenty do, of others, but, but really, Benedict Cumberbatch, good old Crumpty Bump Slapty Back. <laughs> yes, he may he may win an award in an animated film. I I remember when we heard that this movie was going to be announced, and I was and I had no heart. And now, yeah, and now that I've watched the trailer, it's grown three, t- three it's grown times three times size. size. I, yeah. I'm interested in this movie. Did you did you see the was it? Did you post that picture? It was the the a billboard of the Grinch saying, "Stop moving into Los Angeles. It's full." <laughs> No, but that's no, yeah, funny. But I must find it now. Oh, I saw. I think I may. I may have seen it on Reddit. It was a, a the the. It was like a Grinch uh, comes out to you know whenever November 9th or whatever poster, but it just said stop moving into Los Angeles. It's full, <laughs> and it was hilarious. Oh, that's funny. Um, that and if you've ever out- been to Los Angeles, you understand why that's funny. Uh, also coming out November 9th is a movie uh, I know Josh will see. It's called oh, Overlord. Nope. Nope. By the Bad <laughs> nope. Robot Studio. Why nope. not, Josh? This is it's like it's like it's like action meets horror meets uh zombies. Make me want to vomit. Seriously, it's <laughs> like Doom. It's like it's like Doom met aliens and then fuck the purge. The, the best the best way I can think of it is like a it's a all the bad parts of Inglorious Bastards meeting a zombie movie. Right, but also having sex like a, with the purge. It could be yes. good. I don't know why you're crapping no, on. It's it, not going to be. Listen, it could be, but if the advertising is not helping. It's this not going to be good at all. Yeah, it's I, not going to be. Good. I want to see it. I'm going to go see it. So no. screw screw you guys. I'm okay. going home. Uh, also on November 9th is the new uh, installment of The Adventures of Elizabeth Salander, The Girl Ugh. in the Spider's Web, starring Gross. Claire Foy. Uh, I'm excited to see the Queen of England kill a whole bunch of people. Uh, this looks just look, looks like this just, will probably I mean, be look, my I mean, you had, movie. You had Amara do the role, and now you've just sort of regressed oh, into just whatever the fuck. They're just like, oh, hey, remember that American version we did? Just kidding, just kidding. We're going right. back to the... Yeah, because it did awful. The previous one. Right. But that's, Ignore I this. mean, but that's the only version people care about. This is awful. Well, Dude, come I on. Nobody's, so nobody here's cares. The deal. They're going to trick people with this. The people who don't pay attention to No, you actually, actually movie, you you actually have to want to be that girl to watch this movie. <laughs> No, I don't know I'm if I can... no, I'm serious. Like otherwise, you're not. You're, you're just. You're like, oh, I wonder how I could uh, get away with murdering and blackmailing people. Let me watch this movie. Otherwise, you don't care. Or you could talk to Josh about how you can get a PlayStation Four for a hundred dollars. You know, by blackmailing <laughs> his friends and I didn't blackmail anybody. We don't know that for certain, Josh. I was just opportunistic. That's all. Uh, you know what, Josh? I know what you care about. Do Fantastic you? Beasts is where to find them. The longest title for a sequel oh, ever. God, I really comes out do. November sixteenth. I care uh, deeply about the Wizarding World, and we should all care about the Wizarding World. This is going to be fantastic. No, this is going to be this is going to be great. And there's so much that we don't know about this movie. The beasts, the beasts will be fantastic. We're, look, we're going to see uh, Dumbledore, and there's going. I guarantee, I guarantee, there's going to be a reveal about you know how he's gay for Grindelwald. And then yep. that's cool. Like we have seen Nicholas for Mel. We can actually get to see. We him, will like, see for Mel. I, look, I, I look. I just think I think the movie is bigger than everybody thinks. I agree. And I, and I just can't wait. I just think it's going to be huge. I think none of us are expecting how big it's going to be. And I can't wait. Okay, moving on, because I have nothing to say about that. Have you no joy in your life? No, I just, it's not my fandom. I'm not, I'm not uh, making. Not That's fine. I'm not, not his shit. It. It's just not That's my not fandom. His shtick. I just don't fine. care. It's not my thing. God. But also coming out November 16th is the heartwarming uh, comedy uh, Instant Family, starring Mark Wahlberg and Rose Byrne. CJ super hates Rose Byrne in this. Why? And I and I disagree. I Aww. think I think she's right. I think she's right for the role. She's dry enough and she's like super, super, super insecure. So which let me let- makes it great. So let me add the context to this. Josh and I were sitting next to each other, right? We saw Star Wars Born together uh, mm-hmm. for our Patreon exclusive episode. And mm-hmm. this trailer came on, and I, I rolled my eyes so hard that I think the theater shook. Out of his head. Bit. Out of his head, he right? rolled his eyes. And mm-hmm. uh, I'm just like, why? I was like, she doesn't know what movie she's in. She's playing this completely straight. I disagree. And not realizing that she's in a comedy. 
That's Mark Wahlberg. That's her thing. Mark Wahlberg completely knows that what movie he's in, right? Mark Wahlberg and has to be that lighthearted better guy. After being in Neighbors, she should know what movie she's in. Dude, she she's, has it's no basically idea. the same. It's essentially I know, the same essentially role. Essentially the same role. I get that, but she's playing it completely different from the trailers. I disagree. So if she's not doing that, then the trailers have done this movie a terrible disservice, and I have no interest in this movie, and I really, really uh, am, am, am not... I don't know. I'm not rushing to the theater. Uh, but moving on, uh, also because I, I'm just I'm not going to comment on that stupidity of that comment. Wait a minute. Uh, nope. I, how do you feel about that? It. You haven't talked about that movie. How do you feel about Instant Family? I think it looks adorable and great, and I think Rose Byrne is the a fucking delight. Okay, I think she's great. great. Yeah. I think she's in a different movie. I think you don't know what you speak of, sir. All right. <laughs> but also coming out November. You know 16th, not of what you speak. Uh, that's exactly what he just said to me. Uh, that's exactly what I said. Uh, also coming out November 16th is the Steve McQueen directed movie Widows, starring Viola da- Davis and Michelle Rodriguez and Liam Neeson. If and- pass. If you have Liam Neeson and kill him within 20 minutes, pass. Pass. why bother having Liam Neeson? Maybe he they kill him in the second act. Maybe it's 40 minutes. He's like. You know he dies, so like, because the movie's called Widows, so like, like even have... with Colin Farrell, pass. Yeah, I... and John Bernthal. Here's the uh, thing: because he's in pass. it. Pass. This seems John like John Bernthal's a... in it too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, still pass. There's there's a lot of good people in the movie. A lot of it good is, writers and just, directors. But look at the story. But the story that's the problem. It's just like oh, I'm just the not story into looks the like story. shit. Now I'm hoping that this is one of those movies where they totally switch it up on you, and what you expect just gets turned on its head. And and I don't think it was Lee these... the whole time. Yeah, He's a bad guy. I don't think that you put these people in this movie and have it be a bad movie. Brian, right? can we so can we get good. to Thanksgiving week because that is really that is really the week for a few reasons. This is this is the week, uh, oh. November twenty first. Uh, Robin Hood, uh, Taron Egerton, <laughs> yes. uh, and yes, Jamie Foxx really comes good. out. We've talked about it ad nauseum. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Robin Hood. Creed two comes out that week. Which I'm super Cannot excited wait. for. It's gonna be for great. That reasons. is, and that's the end of the blockbuster, ladies and gentlemen. That is fantastic. Creed, I'm so no, glad sir. To... No, it is not. Because you know what else comes out the week of Thanksgiving? I do, Brian. Josh, Josh, I, wh- why is this a special day for us? So special. Here's why. CJ gonna get slapped in the face right after I see Ralph breaks the internet, which comes out November twenty first. I will be driving to CJ's house and slapping him. No, in we his got. Face. We're gonna do this. We're gonna get together at a bar. <laughs> Anybody that wants to come with us, we're gonna have yep. to figure that out. We're going right? to like it's, a PJs or something like oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Some yeah. And PJs, we're live yeah, streaming yeah, we're, me getting slapped in the face. Are you yes. kidding me? This is a production. This is a live to-do. streaming. Also, as well, uh, slow mo photos. It's gonna have like I'm taking slow mo video. I, I gotta have all Josh the is iPhones. hiring people. There's I gotta a have all the involved. iPhones on CJ. This I can't gonna wait. Hurt so bad. It's gonna be so great. Brian, Brian, Josh, Josh. I I need a promise from y- you. You have a responsibility to deliver, Brian. What is what is your what is what do you seek, Josh? I, I need you. I swear to God, I need you to not hold back. On oh, I slap. won't. It's just look. There's there's not going to be hard feelings. I'll be there to to keep CJ from attacking you after you slap the shit out of him. But I need you not to hold back. I have a, an honest question, only just because I can't find it in the show notes of anything right now. When did we first talk about this this slap bet? What year was this? I don't know why I didn't put a time limit on this stupid bet, but I should have. You said, did. Like, no, few, no, no. Uh, go you to did. episode 162. You say when you said it. Okay. You put a time limit on it of five years. Oh, my God. Guess how many years it's been since Ra- Wreck-It Ralph came out. How many years? Like four. Ah! Hang on. Let me God, get let me get the need... exact year Wreck-It Ralph came out. I'm pretty sure it's only been like four. I'm sorry. It's been it's been six years. But you put a time limit of five years that we would never hear anything about. That's it. true. We, I do remember that. That I said, we, oh, they wouldn't even. And do, we heard about it that. like yep. three years. Three in. years ago. Listen, I, I, I'll hold your glasses. We'll we'll bring like like frozen peas or something, but like I really 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 need Brian to slap the ever loving shit out of you. It's gonna be cathartic, I Gosh. think, for all of us. Um, I want you to know, uh, every every horrible thing that has happened to me over the past three to four years. Whoa! Everything that I have been angry about, <laughs> I have not released 
my anger at all. I've just been bottling it. I've been suppressing it because every time I want to lash out, I go, no, save it. Save it for CJ. Save save it for the slap. Save it for the slap. (laughs) And it's all going to come out. That time I stubbed uh, my toe waking up three years ago, that's going to ha- – it's just all going to be in there. You're, you're saying you're going to slap Gasm on him? Oh, it's going to be all over his face. <laughs> here's here's the thing. Once this is done, it's a huge talking point for this show just done. It's just over. Nah. Just pack up shop after that. that dream is no, done. No, because I'll always want to slap Fuck you. Fuck it. Fuck <laughs> it. We, we, we had a good run. Had a good run. What I think, what well, that'll be episode what one? Oh, we'll never get to the pasta. We'll never get to the too much spaghetti. Ah. <laughs> too much spaghetti. Oh well. All right. So listen, there's there's a lot there, but but Brian, can you tell people what's going on with the Patreon for the month of November, please? Uh, I would love to tell you all what's going on with the Patreon. So uh, in case you don't know, because maybe you're new, maybe you're not, maybe you need a reminder. Who knows? Maybe you drank too much the night before. Whatever the case may be, <laughs> you're very assumptive um, of what the listener's life is. I'm, actually, I'm just, actually, what? I think he's covered all the bases. He really I'm, has. I'm trying to. I'm just CYAing all over the place. Uh, so we have a, a poll every month on our Patreon. We take uh, four of the movies from the blockbuster. That we are may not necessarily going to plan on talking about, but maybe we'll go see. We have you, our Patreon subscribers, vote for a movie that we have to see, and we do a special spoiler cast for you, just the, for you, the listeners who uh, are a part of our Patreon tier of ten dollars or more. So, the four movies you have to choose from for the month of November is the uh, Doctor Seuss's The Grinch, Instant Family. Robin Hood and Bohemian Rhapsody. So those are the four movies. If you want to, you know, screw with CJ again because he's did this month and we all saw A Star Is Born, maybe choose Instant Family. Who knows? Um, but I would definitely uh, recommend if you want to get those exclusive episodes. We've done uh, th- four so far. Uh, we've done A Star Is Born, Peppermint, Skyscraper, and The Meg. Uh, you can get access to all of those and the, whatever you want to vote for for the month of November. We will go see it. We will do a spoiler cast of it. Maybe we liked it. Maybe we didn't. Maybe there's a giant shark in it. Who knows? But go onto our Patreon and uh, subscribe for the ten dollar tier or more, and you can be a part of the fun. All right. Well, now that we're done with the the blockbuster, let's take a look at the world of TV and movies in a larger context in a segment that we call Screen. To stream. Still need a theme song. Disney is looking to reboot Pirates of the Caribbean, and guess what? Johnny Depp will not be involved. Oh, you mean the, the entire reason people like Pirates of the Caribbean? Yes. That's the, the the whole reason, the whole thing they built that franchise around, the one character that they, they built the entire franchise Yeah, because seven remember, it was a theme park around. ride that they've now turned out. And it's going to be from the, the writing team of Deadpool. So, I mean... Using that Disney money and Fox money together. I, I Why? I mean, I know why. <laughs> what just happened over there? Well, that was your, like, that's the sum total of your reaction is why I'm laughing. Is like, here's what they did. And you went, why? Well, I, I guess I'm with you. I, if If we have to ask why at all, it, maybe it shouldn't be a it thing. It probably shouldn't be a thing. Let's face it. The last... The last three Pirates movies should have never happened. Yes. Let's, can we just let this die? The first movie was amazing. Just let it die. It's it's over. It's done. They have beaten the horse and trying to make it drink from the water does that they Jerry dragged Bruckheimer it to. Does Jerry Bruckheimer make any more movies or does he only do Pirates movies now? Who? Like Jerry Bruckheimer. No, he's doing your stupid fucking Top Gun movie. <laughs> It's not stupid, Brian. It's not stupid. We're super excited for it. We may I actually, listened to the podcast were... last week. It's shit oh, stupid. Oh, and you? I don't give a shit if Jester's not in it or not, okay? <laughs> Ooh, Jester's dead. Oh, my God. They better say that line in it. I swear to God, if they don't do the Jester's dead bit and he's actually dead, I'm going to be so mad. Anyway, this makes no sense. But, I mean, okay, Disney. I mean, just you do you. As, as we learned, you are the king of sequels, reboots, and everything. So just. I guess this is the world we live in. I guess this is me now. <laughs> no, look, I, I look, there's a Jim Jeffries, uh, wonderful comedian, did a special on Netflix recently that was titled "I Guess This Is Me Now," and he tells that joke, and then at the end it comes full circle. And since then, 
I have in many situations looked at whoever's standing next to me and, and I've just said, well, I guess this is me now. It doesn't matter what it is, right? No, <laughs> right. we're 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 out of mayo. You can't have mayo on your sandwich. It has to be mustard. But I guess this is me now. Could be. I'm the guy who has mustard on their sandwiches. I've had a stuffy nose for three days. But I guess this is me now. All right. Well, you know what? let's continue that trend, all right? Because I also like to go around the internet, find the weird, find the obscure, and then I ask for a tech perspective. And that, pl- I mean, that just goes right in the hand with the next topic, which is. Thank, thank you. Uh, I just, there's a segue. Well, I missed, I missed the modem sound last week. I didn't do it. I just sang Three's Company instead. Thanks, Brian. So the best feature for MySpace, the feature that we all hated, uh, is allegedly coming to Facebook, which is, you ever remember loading up your MySpace Yeah, the page? top 10 songs or whatever. And music would play for the friends. So good. You, uh, well, Facebook is trying to bring that back to Facebook. Hey, hey, Facebook's you know what to- I love? You know What's what I that? love? Let when me. I go to a website and random fucking music plays yeah. <laughs> for no fucking reason. So this is this is a little more... A little more reserved because you can pin like some favorite songs that you're listening to, right? And then it's on your profile, and then they press play, and then pull in from Apple Music or Spotify, it'll play the full song, right? Except, uh, two things first, I, I don't go on Facebook like, unless somebody tags me, I'm probably not on. There. Uh, and then on the flip side, a lot of people follow me on Apple Music, so yes. They right. I mean, it, look, I yeah, guys. If you're interested in what I'm listening to, follow me on Apple Music. Legit, it's it's probably the best use of Apple Music you can get is get Josh's kind of curated. L- listen, playlists. listen, Melanie. I don't give a shit what May Day Parade song really speaks to you <laughs> at this moment right now. Okay, <laughs> it doesn't matter. What's wrong with May Day Parade? I don't. I don't care that you once had a boyfriend who once said that mean thing to you and it made you think of this song. I just it, it's it, oh it's it so gets worse. It gets worse. It's so it gets what's, wrong, what's wrong with May Day Parade? Nothing. All right. But you I said it. Picked you a said random it emo band. Like it, they're okay. I picked a random emo band. You should have said Dashboard. They're way more emo. I see. I like Dashboard I like more dashboard. than May Day. Uh, yeah. No, I'm with you. All right. Wait, wait, wait. Let's enough. see. Let's see how closely you've paid attention to Brian in the past. Josh, why does he like Dashboard more than the other emo bands? I'm gonna I'm gonna refer you to episode 142. I don't Why know. does Brian like that that band a little more? I I honestly don't know. The does answer Brian is know? the Spider Man soundtrack. Oh, <laughs> the Spider Man Two soundtrack. Yeah, yeah. Spider-Man, Spider Man two. two. Okay, dash. Yeah. Dashboard okay. Fair it. enough. I, I'm just I, saying. Look, I like them because hands down. But like, I like the, hands down as well. It. But like hands down, that, we all like hands down. It's a great album. It was the song, but yeah. So this is going to get uh, a lot worse than just having your random songs on on your profile page. Uh, Facebook has a bunch of other companies and services that they bought and developed that is probably all going to roll into one. One of them is Leap Lip Sync Live, where you can go ahead and basically, you know, lip sync live. Oh wait, 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 hold on, hold on, wait, 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 wait. Is this like I look into my phone? Yes. Right. Like like face face camera. Sure. And it's video karaoke? Yes. Oh, my fucking God. This sounds amazing. I want to try it. Then there's Can Facebook. I use an Animoji while I do it? No. Oh, that but they do have filters. Better. They do have filters. But well, not it's me with I'll, use, I'll use the filters. Probably. Then they also have Facebook music for your stories in your feed, too. So people can also just throw that into there. So they can show their Dude, boring making this. pancakes I and then making I love it. music I love in there. It. I love I'm it. hoping. I'm hoping. They can do this with podcast a little bit. Can I throw a podcast into a story? An audio clip from from one of these episodes? A clip, maybe would, like yeah, that's the thing. too a much spaghetti be should be in my Facebook story. A clip would be good. A clip would be great, but I don't want to hear Maroon Five can, and DJ well, that's College. The thing. Can, the can I? Upload? Will Will they steal all of the songs I pin and hence own a piece of my soul? <laughs> well, yes, that's <laughs> in the terms and conditions of Facebook. I'm just, Why, Brian? I'm just curious. This is fun. Isn't this fun? No, no. I don't use fucking Facebook. Uh, and that's the thing. I haven't used Facebook in over. I'm not bragging. I haven't used Facebook in over a month. I, I will. I, I would actually be a more active user if uh, I could lip sync. I will. Lo- what songs? Uh, what songs are you lip syncing live? What karaoke songs are you? I'm gonna doing? tell you right now. I'm excited. Uh, may, may, maybe like a little Whitney Houston. 
A little, I want to dance with so somebody. I'm just, oh, okay. oh. I want to dance with somebody. Exactly right. Right. Maybe a little Eve 6. I was well on my pad. I'm a chocolate uh, man. It was so good. I fucking love that song. I would, I would super. <laughs> Wait, why is Eve 6 song? the same voice as Creed? No, it's not. No, no, it's no. no. Not. Eve 6 Eve, isn't as gravelly as Creed. It's not. They've got but kind you, of like you, the scene. You did it, Brian, but you did do it wrong. It's not that. He's way more, he's way more California. It's yeah. Not, it's not. I'm, that. I'm, listen, I just freaking. Stop I'm sorry. Florida. I didn't Honestly, know I was supposed to perform for you. Okay, I, my I, bad. I would, I, I like if this if this uh, Facebook thing is a thing, I may do it. I may just fucking throw it out there. Well, because they've been testing music stories for the last couple of months, and they even did it on Instagram, right? Which is probably where I would use this a little more rather than Facebook. I'd use it on Instagram. But I mean, okay. Fine, I'm gonna have to deal with more, I, and I've got to watch people's stories. I don't watch stories, so who knows? I probably bet that Snapchat did all this first, and they're just copying it. So, Josh, since you're a huge fan of Harry Potter, I thought we would throw this story in for you. The photo company LifePrint is launching an augmented reality printer that is themed with Harry Potter. So you take a picture, right? And basically then it uses AR beautiful magic that when you point your phone at it, uh, it is now animated, just like a typical Harry Potter picture is. Sure, sure. But then the casing is branded with your favorite house or Death Eater if you want to be that person. Do, do I have to use my phone to view the, the thing? Yeah, that's that's how augmented reality no, works. Then I don't... I, 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 well, I want the technology... I know. If it was a picture that moved, <laughs> I would be interested. That would That would be called a movie. Or perhaps but I don't. A if I have to use my phone to look at it, it's it's just it's just uh it's just like it's not a thing. I want a picture that moves. Do, a, is there a picture that moves? Only when you do the the appy. I don't want to use an app. I just want to hold the picture in my hand. Well, that's and have called it magic. Move. That's called well. That's magic, what I right. fucking want, CJ. I I'll want magic. It, uh, we all want magic, but it's not happening. If you are, however, interested in not magic photos and think that this does sound pretty cool, uh, it is on sale. Again, Harry Potter themed and licensed for $149. $1.49? No, $149.99 for this printer. And and like think of it like, like the Polaroid thing. You take a picture on Whoa, your phone. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. $150? Yes. Wait, wait, wait. Hold no. on. The printer, wait, the printer prints live photos? So you take the photo on the phone. Is it like a hologram? Do I have to no. tilt it? No. Hold on. You take a picture on your phone, right? A and live it, photo? And then it, it records an It records a little bit of movement. Could be a video. It could be yeah, a so GIF. It's an iPhone. Whatever. Gotta use an iPhone. Right? Got it. Uh, no, it could be Android. Works no, it can't. it can't. They don't work. They have they Google. Work. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, Topshot. If you use Top the app. Shot. Anyway. Only the new thing has Top, top Shot. Anyway. Then you uh, send it to the printer. The printer will then print out the photo with a secret code based onto it. So when you open up the application, it will then animate the photo that's in front of you because it reads the hidden code on the photo. I f- I still feel like you're gonna have to like tilt it like a hologram thing. I mean, you can, but like, you it's don't not have- gonna. Work. That's not how AR works. But but I mean, it's dude, fine. how 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 is this? How does this thing print an animated? I don't. Under- so this is cool. So it it embeds a hidden. What what wizardry is this? Right, that's the fun part. They embed a hidden uh, AR code in the picture, so you cannot see. There's little dots that you cannot see, and that is telling your app, "Oh, hey, play file X, Y, and Z," and then it pulls that file from and the then cloud. Plays it. Well, I don't know. The cloud could be locally. I don't know. Well, no, it'd have to be right. I would hope it's no server way. side because then you could send this to somebody who doesn't necessarily have the printer but has the app, and then you can see it move. Uh. I don't know if this is wizardry or fuckery. But look, either way, I, look, look. I'm I'm skeptical. It's done. It works. This product has been out for a while. The, How do you know it works? Does this has been out for a uh, long enough? Do you have it? I, have I it? personally don't, but I, I Well mean, then how do you know? Because I'm watching a gif of it working right now on the verge. Yeah, that could be you know, Photoshop. I don't or think the verge shopped. is photoshopping. It I don't it could think be shopped. I don't think the verge would uh would, would do that to you. They would launch this printer, though, back in 2016. So if this was BS, we would have heard about it by now. This is old tech. This is the only one that actually is branded Harry Potter, which Correct. is why it's $150. You guys in your magic. That's why. You guys in your magic scare. It's dumb. Well, you know what, then? Let's cheer this up, because uh, I have been saving a lot of topics, because Brian has was not with you us You know what week. else is dumb? <laughs> this, first, this first topic in Cape Talk. Continue. <laughs> 
So to make Brian happy, I have been holding back some topics because it is time to talk about the world of comics. See how it's affecting TV, see how it's affecting movies, but most of all, how is it affecting Brian? Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for, it's time for Cape Talk. Cape Talk! This is dumb. Oh, tell me what's dumb, Brian. I'm tell the, so tell the people. stupidly angry right now. Tell Why? the people what's dumb. All right, so, so let me paint you a picture. All right. Are you um, using your words or I'm gonna I'm gonna paint you a word picture. I want okay. you to close your eyes. You're gonna, you're gonna paint yourself. a picture with your mouth. I thought you were doing a brush and I was like, ooh. So I want you I, I, no, this is not Bob Ross. I, I don't I don't have those happy skills. little trees. Happy little uh, trees. there are no happy trees in this scenario. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Tell us what's going on. I want you to imagine you're you're in your happy place. You're watching an amazing cartoon. It's it's on for five years and it's it's really well done. It does all sorts of great things with characters that you love. And then they cancel it. And then a year or two later, they bring it back, but not the way that you want it brought it back. It's dumb and it's stupid. And it's for, I don't even want to say children. It's for, it's for like four-year-olds. It's not what you loved. And they just shit all over waffles, what you love. Waffles, waffles, waffles. Okay. Dude, waffles, it's adult waffles, humor. Waffles, waffles, waffles. It's not, adult humor. Stop with your stupid freaking waffle song. It's all adult right? humor. Then they release a movie, not of the show that you love, but of the shitty show that you hate. It's actually a really good movie. It was a good you, movie. Yeah. You, as a true fan, are forced to go see this and forced to pretend to like it because two young children are with you. <laughs> but there is a glimmer of hope, my friends, because at the end of the credits, they show a scene of the show that you love. And you're like, oh, my gosh, it could be coming back. And then two days ago. You're taking your break at work and you read an article <laughs> saying, in fact, it is coming back and it's going to mash with the thing that you hate. So the original animated Teen Titans, which is the most amazing show I have seen in a long time, will return for Teen Titans Go versus Teen Titans. Yay. And I am so angry. This is dumb. This is why? No, because it's stupid. I don't want their peanut butter in my chocolate. <laughs> there's a teaser te for it i just want my teen titans back i watched the teaser i don't care the teaser is just like the the intros interweaving with each other like right hey yeah. great show shitty show great show shitty show it really is the chocolate and peanut butter you know it's like it's like um when you go to the eye doctor and they go number one or number two <laughs> i won't right, number one I, or number i two. actually i won't be shocked if they make a chocolate and peanut butter joke oh they should <sighs> oh they probably will why <laughs> there, there's no 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 there's no there's no reason for this the, both of these shows have their different audiences brian they're just bringing back they're just look teen no, titans they're not go bringing is a it thing. back no what look, are you going teen to titans do go teen titans go is a thing right now yes. people like it yes it's, it's people watch it made a lot of money they it, they cross over teen titans and then they get to bring teen titans back too this is the teen, teen titans teen way titans back right brian, brian here's the deal they no, haven't no, they no, haven't no, told no, you no for, no no Teen Titans already has its audience. The, the, the people will come back regardless. They, they need don't need a new to, audience. They don't need to do this backdoor lover thing. They need they a new they audience. Want, yeah, they no, don't they want don't. you. They don't want you, Brian. They want no. new people. They new want new people. people. They want no, the kids. They, they don't want, want, you. want the kids. You want, want you. Kids. You want you. They don't want you. They want the younger audience. And here's the thing. They haven't announced whether this is going to be uh, – uh, is this a whole show that's being crossed over? Is it one episode? Is it a movie? They this haven't told the way, what it is. This is a test. It's the test. It's, it's the, the backdoor in. pilot. Right. Right. This is the backdoor pilot. Just like Batwoman showing up in the crossover to event. Totally cool with this. Totally this cool. This is fine. Listen, you deal with one – episode probably one episode of teen titans go where they cross over the original titans and people go and oh, it'll be funny that and looks fun. pretty good and then they like and here's your series back guys and right. all you young people who just watched this who are now getting older than the the waffles joke that we're currently doing will probably like this dj if i deal with more than 20 minutes of this bullshit i'm gonna slap you again oh come this on. isn't on me i'm just saying this is a good thing dude it, i if it it, here, it here, is here's, good. It is a good. Thing. Here, here's here's the directive. If this is more than one episode or an hour and a half movie, I will slap you again. Let's say Chuck. Chuck. We, you want Chuck to come back, right? I think it's. I, I think they ended in a way that they could bring it back. But let's just say it had to go through a really shitty show to cross over to bring it back. Would you abide by that? Will you just let it happen so that way you can get Chuck back? It, they have to cross over a Scrubs Med School. There you go. Would you allow that to happen so that way you can have Chuck back? 
You got to deal with the female JD, no JD, right? Yeah, you deal with it. You got to deal with that to get Chuck back. Would you do it? You would. I would. Hold on. I'm hearing a lot of silence here and I lean back in the chair and I'm not hearing. That means you're right. That means you're right, CJ. Yeah. It means you've made your point. You've won the argument. Brian has. I just to want to be angry. Let me be angry. <laughs> He's got his process. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, let's talk a little bit about some some Marvel news. And that is uh, Daredevil season three out right now. Uh, hope which you, is amazing. Hope and you I watched finished it. it and it is amazing. Uh, so I good. Don't, See, I don't want to talk. CJ, CJ, CJ. Yes, are you done yeah. with the season? I am. All right. Very good. Well done. I am. I'm actually on. Uh, I have. I have rewatched. Josh is on a went rewatch. Back. I went back after watching season three. I went back to season one, episode one. I am on season two, episode eight already, and I'm going to rewatch season three Deal by with the it. time extra long episode. Oh yeah, it's Ev- so good. Everything that we love about Daredevil is the fact that anytime you see a hallway. Right, you get really excited. Oh, the a hallway, hallway any, fight, any tight, so any tight quarters. So, really, the hallway fight in this scene, by the no, way, no, no, the jail fight. Scenes, the, it is, it, I know, it starts. It's as a, a hallway, hallway fight that turns, turns into a into prison jail fight. fight. So, which was awesome. It is an it eleven. So good. It is an eleven minute fight, and it is all one take, one shot, no cuts. It is. There are brutal no, good. and there are no hitting cuts in there. There's a moment where you think maybe there's a hitting cut. There isn't. They shot it all in one take of total of 11 minutes. It is some of the best fucking fighting that we've seen on these it's shows. Brilliant. And it's it is. brilliantly shot and choreographed. Yeah. It makes the whole freaking season just amped up to a whole nother level that you weren't ready for. It's so great. We'll talk about Daredevil later and get some impressions for it. Uh, maybe next week or, or, or give you a little time. It's so damn good but so good watch it i've gone back and watched all of it if again. you need more time the next week then you don't deserve us yeah and and again i'm just i'm just impressed and i want you to, to read the article that we have in the show notes just is, is it something it, you read or is it something you watch watch the fight but then read about oh, yeah, it I've it's really good it's really good to read about just what it took what inspired it how they got there it, it's a really good read i would highly recommend it so tip of the hat hats off to, to indie wire is a really good article uh, but we do have to follow up with some uh, Marvel news that we didn't get to talk about for the last couple weeks, and that is both Luke Cage and Iron Fist have been officially canceled by Netflix. And Netflix is saying that they did it. This was their decision. Uh, wasn't wasn't the big old mouse here is telling them to to do it. But um, those two shows are gone. And to be fair, no one we didn't the three of us did not like Iron Fist season one. We actually documented how how much we didn't like uh, it. I really like season two. A lot of people like season two. However, comma, the viewership was low. I mean, I didn't watch season two of Luke Cage. Yeah, or, Iron Fist season one was so bad. I don't think enough people came and, back for and, season two. And I am okay. admittedly part of the problem for this. I didn't watch the second season of these shows. Right. And I, I know I'm not alone in this. Going, Oh, I'll watch it maybe after Daredevil or something. Uh, and it's gone. Now, Brian, I found a glimmer of hope. I found something that said maybe not all this. You lost. found wishful thinking you, on the internet, and then you beat me down and and prepared to basically to to break my spirits like you're going to do on November 21st when you slap me in the face. That fans are saying maybe, hopefully, maybe this is a signal that Heroes for Hire could be a series because those two were good together, not good separate. Maybe it'll be together. Maybe it'll be on Netflix. Maybe it'll be on the Marvel streaming service or the Disney streaming service. What are your thoughts on that? It's wishful thinking. As much as I would love it to be true, Net, Net, Netflix. This this has nothing to do with Disney streaming service. I, I mean, the last article I read from the Netflix CEO was: "We have a very strong relationship where we will continue to be doing the Marvel Universe." Um, and these shows got canceled because reasons. Well, the thing is, Netflix gauges whether or not they're going to keep a show, not by how many people watch the first episode of the first couple episodes. It's how many people watch the entire season. I, I forget where I read this. Yeah, they, I think I think that's it. That, that's they, actually the issue with Luke Cage is I don't people, think people finished it. People started it and never finished it. And they also, on top of that, gauge social media reactions. Right. So social media reactions for Luke Cage season one were great. It like killed the internet it for was, a it week. Was very good. Yep. So yep. they're like, yeah, we're going to bring it back for season two. When season two dropped, did you see anything about it? No. Nope. No. So I, 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 Hey, this is nice. It's, it's nice to think about maybe one day down the road. We'll, we'll, we'll do it. But this is wishful thinking. These shows are dead. 
And so we're left with uh, just Daredevil and Jessica Jones right now as the. Uh, I Netflix. wouldn't be surprised if Jessica Jones. Uh, Jessica is next. Jones Jessica is on the Jones bubble. Going away we too, definitely talked about sure. Jessica Jones being on the bubble. Uh, but uh, depending on who or what they bring back or what they do for season, Daredevil three, is the, the real deal. Daredevil oh, yeah. is is as good, if not better, than let's, even some of the stuff HBO has. Let's done. be let's be really honest before you ask your question. The only one of these characters, the only two of these characters that warrants to be able to do multiple seasons after Matt seasons Murdock and Frank Castle. that have like the story and the rogues gallery. Are Daredevil and Punisher. Yeah. Luke yep. Cage doesn't have the the villains. Nope. Iron Fist had to borrow a Daredevil villain for season two. Typhoid Mary is a Daredevil villain. Um, Jessica Jones. I mean, I, you can keep playing the private eye angle. I don't. I don't know how honestly, much more you can do with it. Honestly, that that first season uh, and and it was good enough to stand alone as a worthwhile watch. Yes, but like. Stre- like, you can't stretch that character too much further. She's an ensemble character. Luke Cage. I mean, Iron Fist and Power Man, right? How how long were they teamed up in the comics, bro? At least 20 years. Like yeah. forever, That's, right? Yeah. And, and because they're not good standalone. They need to be together. So uh-huh. honestly, Heroes for Hire could be the three of them. Yes. And I, I oh, like, I'd sign up for that. All three of those stories yeah, happening nice. at one time. That'd be great. So what as if, long as they do it better those, than Defenders, yes. What if those three did Heroes for Hire and we still had Daredevil and Punisher standalone? I'm, I mean, I'm holy more than fine shit. with that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we'll have yeah, to see. Yeah, but we don't I, work for Netflix, so. I, I'm also hoping womp, womp. that Luke Cage and Iron Fist show up in these other shows. Just one episode, two episodes, an appearance, something. Just because you can't completely, like... Don't hey no Retcon don't fuck them. up my Matt Murdock with fucking Danny Rand don't do oh it. no 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 I'd like like a picture like oh a picture I'm, oh that this guy also exists yeah type of thing yeah just oh oh he's right. out there like, there's a news clip uh, playing <laughs> yeah, in the background right. of Luke Cage yeah all right fair enough on some fire fire on the TV with behind you that's it yeah that's fine I'm okay with that all right well don't don't fuck up my Matt Murdock and don't fuck up my Frank Castle. All right, let's move over to the world of DC. We we got some some news from DC that uh, I mean, I'm not I'm not troubled by this at all. I just this is just weird news. Wonder Woman 1984 has been pushed back 7 months. It's not weird news. I don't uh I don't know if you guys heard that. Um that was actually Megan Dunn breaking something. <laughs> <laughs> it's not weird news. It, it, they so, pushed so it back. explain explain what's going on, Brian, cuz you, you seem to be tuned in. They this pushed it back more. to summer. They made a lot of money in the summer when the first one came out. They're going to make a lot of money this coming summer. Yeah. Let, let's face it. If it came out in dude, what, what dude, was it, it was, originally? It was, was going to be, it was, it be a year from now. It was going to be in December of and, 2019. And it was going to be November 2019. And now it's June and 5th, now, 2020. And now I got to wait a year and a half. Yes. Yes, you movie. do. How am I supposed to explain this to my daughter <laughs> is what I want to know. Well, here's the other thing. Hold on. There's a whole bunch of um, other money. Yeah. Makes the world go round. She Sorry, doesn't care Zoe. about money. She's eight. She just wants another Wonder Woman movie. So it moves to June 5th, 2020. Now, knowing that that's where Wonder Woman is, here's what's coming before it. We've got Aquaman in December. We've got Shazam in April. And we have said that... There, Cannot the, wait for Shazam. The, Cannot wait. The Right. The bigger DC universe and Justice all those other big, big movies of them all being connected forever... Really, kind of hinge on what does Aquaman do on this, right? That's gonna that's gonna cast some dice as to what's going else. You know, what they're else never they're going to can this movie if that's no, 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 no. Nope. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. Uh, I'm saying there's also the Joker movie, which is going to be released on October of 2019. So you've three other movies that are going to come out before we get Wonder Woman. Looking at that landscape, this I'm I'm thinking me, my personal opinion, this may be the last DC EU movie that comes out from that original timeline this is the end of it well the joker movie has nothing to do with this time i know but what i'm saying is that i think that aquaman and shazam i get what you're saying you're saying you're saying wonder woman is the last chance yes no that's and, it. and that's it it's over or aquaman is so bad shazam is you know what good but not the money that they were hoping for and we all say goodbye to that universe and those actors and all of that with the with wonder, wonder, wonder woman. woman and then we get a whole then it's a whole new reboot so Ben Affleck's God. gone, Henry still, Cavill's I, gone, I all those people are gone. I still need Gal Gadot. And I know, I and she's her. a wonderful Wonder Woman, no pun intended. No, I need, I need her. I and need I her. and I want her in there, and I mean, I, I just don't know, but 
Margot Robbie's bird. Of I mean, there's so I don't understand this DC timeline. I don't understand. I, I, I mean, don't think I don't think they care that? if you understand it at this point. They're just trying to make money. <laughs> I guess. I mean, I guess that's <laughs> that, and that's really what all comes but down I, to. They're really like, do... well, Justice League was a dumpster fire, so let's try and salvage what we can and I, go from there. I yeah. What stops them from just continuing? Like, who gives a fuck what anybody thinks? We're just gonna keep doing this because it makes money. No, I agree. Nothing. Nothing. Just right. So I mean, maybe, just the critics. Maybe, that's CJ, it. CJ, mm -hmm. maybe you're wrong. I, maybe they just go. We don't really. We don't give care. a shit. You don't really give a shit. I mean, you're really. You're still going to come and see my movie, right? Yeah. You're going to come watch it anyway. So we're just going to keep making movies. Uh, I agree. I I agree. I'm just saying. I think that they may say goodbye to the DCU universe that they had pictured with Wonder Woman okay. and Reboot at all. Uh, all right. But I do want to talk about a wonderful piece of artwork that was shared on Instagram. That at first was like, this is fake, and then I realized, oh my god, it's real. Stephen Amell. Uh, did a wonderful post of him in the Flash uniform, right? In the Flash costume. And then uh, right next to him, we've got a good old Barry Allen dressed as the Arrow. All right. Grant That's Gustin. not nearly as exciting as some of the pictures he's shared since. Yes, there have been more. Uh, but what we've found out is that uh, the Elseworld that we were talking about a few weeks ago for the DC Arrowverse crossover uh, it's going to have a, a nice good old flip flop on, on some roles here, Brian. But, yeah, uh, okay. Inform people have, what else? Inform people what else you you've seen that is. We're really going to have a world where Oliver Queen is the Flash and Barry Allen turns into the Green Arrow. That's all well and good. Uh, there's been a couple set photos of them in those suits and stuff. What what I got really excited about. And I don't know if you guys saw this this photo. John Wesley Ship, who if you know uh, any if you've been watching Flash, he plays Barry's father. In Flash, he, yep. spoilers, he dies at the end of season two. Right. The big, the really cool thing about him is that he was the original television Flash in right. 1991, right? Yes. The latest photo I saw is John Wesley Shipp in his old Flash uniform with the two of them. So there's a world where the 1990 Flash still exists, and it's going to be awesome. And I want to rewatch it all. It's on DC Universe, by the way. If you don't have Honestly, DC Universe, this you should subscribe. Thing with... with uh, I'm most excited to see what Grant Gustin does. Me too. As as Green Arrow. Like that that for me is the thing. And like how can Stephen Amell possibly be the Flash? Right. I uh, I'm like I'm, I'm not that's I'm questioning that. But seeing the photos of Grant Gustin as Green Arrow, I'm thinking, now, oh, that's actually really cool. Now, Brian, you forgot another you forgot to mention another picture. What I what I forget what I sure so I we see? had we had Grant Gustin right we did had Stephen Amell Can and then we had in the middle our Superman in the Arrowverse wearing oh, yeah, the yeah, black yeah. suit oh yes yes uh, the old uh, Death and Return of Superman suit it looks really good and it looks like a black <sighs> Superman suit yes it's really good sure <laughs> I was very excited can you not so can you not good. do that that's mm. creepy and <sighs> oh, <my> God. <sighs> <laughs> okay, all right, Hannibal Lecter. Fava beans and a nice Chianti. Anyway, this is going to be awesome. Listen, I got to say, this this Elseworld uh, crossover event looks looks pretty good, man. First week of December. Also, Kate Kane is Batwoman. You mean Ro uh, Ruby Ro Rose is yeah, Batwoman? Ruby Rose. Uh, what, the, the character's Kate Kane, though. Oh, Kathy Kane, yeah. Yeah. So Kate is a way that some people abbreviate Kathy. Exactly right. Uh, I'm well yes, aware. plus we have Batwoman. And, yes, I don't want to discount Batwoman showing up in, in this crossover event. This is going to be awesome. And if you're not watching any of these shows, they're on Netflix. Just watch them. Don't be a douche. Are they, Wait, wait. Are they on Netflix? How how soon after they premiere are they on Netflix? Well, the current season is on Netflix, not until the season's over. No, no, no over. I'm saying like the, the season the wraps and then a few weeks later. Like, like week literally later, like two on. or three weeks later, it's up so on Netflix. So if I want to watch it, it has to be Hulu. If right? you want to watch, if you want to keep current, Hulu only has to pass five episodes. Right. So you're yes. going to want to watch them now because they're on episode three. Sure. The D does the DC Universe have them? No, DC Universe doesn't have them right now. CW. Because CW. CW or, 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 or Hulu. And honestly, it, you guys should catch up with Arrow because this this season premiere of Arrow was pretty legit. Since we just talked about the really good DC TV shows, it's time to talk about that bastard that's sitting over there on the Fox network and say, shut up, show. Don't do this anymore. Gotham, the show on Fox, is coming back and they have revealed their iconic Batman villain, Bane, which looks like... Hey, Oh, hi, Bane. You're the real Bane, not this steampunk <laughs> oh, bullshit. Oh, yes, CJ. You merely adapted Bane. 
I was born Wait, with him. I adopted Bane? I was molded by him. Will you call me Papa? Why do I look like a Terminator who's been put in the microwave? I don't. Well, but it put in a microwave, but also uh, dressed by the same people that did demolition. Yeah, you look like something why, the Mythbusters would cook why, up. Why do I look like Sylvester Stallone will be chasing me anytime <laughs> soon? Also, he's not. Hey, Bane, are you familiar with the three seashells or? <laughs> I do not know of this three seashell bullshit. Look, that's you a just fine. Curse. That's a you fine. just curse. You just curse until you get all the demerits. A demerit. I, uh, yes. I am you, fine Josh, with the sure. paper demerits to clean my <laughs> bottom. <laughs> this looks terrible, Why babe. do they care? Why do they want to shit all over my memory? I, I, I don't the know, The fire man. rises inside of me when I hear about this show, CJ. <laughs> <laughs> the bile rises inside Fox of me when I hear about this show. they are in control. Uh, do they feel like they're in control? <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear Brian singing earlier in the episode, Bane? He was, he was really good. Oh, uh, yes, CJ. He has a lovely voice. That's all I wanted. <laughs> That's all I wanted. <laughs> all right, Bane. It was nice seeing you. Thanks for stopping by, man. We missed you. But this Bane looks terrible. I mean, so I mean, bad. Gotham is terrible. So, so, I mean, oh, why? I hate everything about this show. And no, I won't be watching Pennyworth, by the way. Oh, yeah. Also no, made by the no. same creators of this show, by I the think, way. I think you're well, the, you have to download a special uh, service. Like I a, don't like have like epix like, like a Sparklick service or something. It's, it's crazy. Spark plug. Some crazy. I name. think Brian Spark, is the only Spark one with epics. So uh, I don't have epics. Oh, you don't know. Oh, well, then it's not all right, Brian Thornton, I'm going to turn this over to you, sir. Uh, Spider-Man. Ah, uh, yes, I do want to have a, a, a brief rant about my beloved Spider-Man game. And the only reason I'm actually bringing this up is because actually the only time I've actually interacted with fans, you're welcome, is about this game because some people have asked me about this. Uh, the first part of the three-part DLC uh, dropped on Monday. Uh, it is called The Heist. It's a part of a larger story called The City That Never Sleeps. It is story-driven DLC. It's not like little challenge rooms or anything. And it is amazing. And not just because it's just this game. This, this game was amazing. We all know how I felt about this game. Uh, just to give you a little brief uh, idea into uh, the life of Brian Thornton. I have no life. Um, <laughs> I, do. I left work on Monday. I immediately turned on my system. I downloaded it. And I, pl- I was like, oh, you know, I don't. You know what? I'm not hungry right now. You know, I, I had a late lunch. I'll wait to eat dinner. Let me play a little bit of this DLC. Four hours later, I had not eaten dinner and I had beaten the DLC. <laughs> um, but it was amazing. It was a solid four hours of gameplay. It has its own side missions and everything. I get to be with Black Cat. And we get to kick ass together. And it ends on a cliffhanger. So I am happy, yet I am also angry because I have to wait another month for the next part of the story, and I'm a little. That's kind of dope, though. That like games are at that level at this point. Yeah, that's, I mean that's really cool. It was really cool, very well done. Um, if you have the game, play it. It's fantastic, and that's really all I wanted to say. If you don't have the game, CJ, get a PlayStation Four, CJ, <laughs> and play this game, and then play the DLC, CJ. Man, if I had time to play games, this would be very cool. That's, I that's do kind of make the time. Thing. I don't no, have the time for this. No, there's no chance. I, I got time. Kids. I got two no kids, way. an hour commute, and then I got this thing to do. Sounds like sounds like a you problem. The day I would do this, it would be the day that I edit <laughs> like the I, show. I fly 85 times a year. How am I going to play games? <laughs> there's no chance. You could absolutely fit that shit into a backpack. <laughs> and with a little portable screen, hook that up, and you're no good chance. to go. Oh, yeah. no, no chance. Air- airport security, totally going to let you go through with that. They totally right. would. It's just electronics. They're not going to make you get that, rid of that. I just, oh, just check a bag every time you go anywhere. And then you could be one of the assholes yeah, waiting for your bag. Yeah, check a bag. I can fit my PlayStation in a carry-on backpack. No joke. True story. Like, if you sacrifice clothing, Sure. Or shoes. I'm not will. I'm not willing to sacrifice I, shoes. I get. I get one personal item. Like I have to pack no, a PlayStation no, on, instead of you shoes. You want to talk about the logistics of this? Here it goes. All right. I get one carry on. and I get one personal item. The backpack is something that could fit under the seat. That's my personal item. I could fit my PlayStation and a small, like maybe seven or ten inch LCD to hook it up with in a backpack. This is insane. I I actually can't believe 
that you're planning this out. You're missing the super obvious solution to this. It's not very hard. You hire somebody to carry your PlayStation and your screen. <laughs> you buy them a separate plane ticket so that way you don't have to check a bag. That's what I'll do. I'll get a mule. Duh. You know what? The next time I fly, I am purposely going to make sure I do this. Because yeah, you need to you. fucking film it too, because this is going to be the the like the least convenient flight solution ever. The person next to you though is going to be very very interested. It's legit going to be a wireless controller, one cable. I'll have a little like battery pack <laughs> in the backpack that'll get me at least the two to three hours of playtime on there. It's by the it's there, so ridiculous. Wham bam, thank you, ma'am. I'm landed in Florida. I just played three hours of a game that I love, and I didn't know what happened. Like, uh, come on, <laughs> so Brian, ridiculous. Brian fly, finds an outlet in the plane that he can plug into. Like you, you would do to charge your phone, but he does it for the PlayStation and brings the whole plane down. <laughs> oh my god, y'all There's making no this way too complicated, people. So, Brian, speaking of fan interaction, and the only time you interact with What's them is, is talking about Sony PlayStation, it's time to turn to our question of the week. Uh, and for those of you who are unaware, you can go ahead and check out our Patreon page at least by Thursday. I will have mm-hmm. the past, the I will have posted the question of the week. This week's question is, what fictional death hit you the hardest and why? Uh, so Patreon supporter Megan, wonderful Megan, which we already uh, uh, talked to earlier, says, I don't think I ever cried as hard as I did with Andrew Martin and Bicentennial Man. He was not only a fictional character, but a robot to boot, to which I then replied, I completely forgot about that movie. And I bawled like a baby when that happened. It was a good it call. It clearly Megan. wasn't memorable if you forgot about it, so it couldn't have hit you that hard. It wasn't the hardest. I forgot about that until she brought it up, and now it, that wound is fresh, and I am now I am now crying. Oh, okay. Wuss. Anyway. Wow. wow. <laughs> That's me. Heartless bastard, um, you. Dread A, 1983, says, This is hard because a lot of times the shock factor is lost when they bring said character back from, from the dead in some way. But honestly, the hardest was Lyle DeLandy from Gundam 00 first season. He piloted the Gundam Dynamis. I really hope I pronounced that right because that was the one Gundam scene, season I haven't watched. Sorry, Dre Day 1983. And uh, yes, typical anime and comic book. You killed the character, but you brought him back. Probably. The way it works. Joshua Burns, I think we got a <laughs> lovely comment here that I think you can read. My lady wife says... <laughs> Bruce Willis in Armageddon. The goodbye with Liv Tyler is so sad. Can't remember either character's names. Still ugly cried. Also, Ben Sullivan in Scrubs. Super side plot twist. Now, if you guys don't remember, this is Brendan Fraser's character in Scrubs. Oh, I remember. Oh, we he all remember. Dies. And, th- and, that, and that scene with t- with, where JD says to Dr. Cox, where, where do you, do you think, think we you are? are? Yep. God damn it, at, Josh. And they're at the funeral, at the cemetery. And he was joyful because he thought he was going to a, a, a birthday party. Everybody ugly cries. And then, spoilers, Brian, Opie Winston in Sons of Anarchy. Oh, that oh no, I was totally going to watch Sons of Anarchy next week. Oh, my God. <laughs> because that hurts. Opie. That hurts so Listen, much. Listen, Brian, even, even if I said, spoilers, Opie dies, and you watch it, you will not be prepared. Nope. I've known that Opie death. dies. No, 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 no. You can know it, but you can never, ever, ever be prepared for, it. for Opie's death. Okay. It is so sad. Craig Phillips says, Binks at the end of Hocus Pocus, uh, tag Josh Burns. I have not seen Hocus Pocus, but apparently this death has affected Craig Phillips. Uh, look, I love Bette Midler. Probably not watching her in a witch movie. Just not not my thing. My favorite thing is that you yelled spoilers to him. <laughs> I did. I did. I did with River Song. And then he was just like, that movie came out in like what? What was it? What year? Doesn't matter. <laughs> it came out in 1993. Seriously. Yeah. Doesn't matter. It's playing on an AMC though, so you should uh you should get together. Yeah, it's the- Halloween. <laughs> it's re-released everywhere. Um Brian Roman, executive producer slash Patreon subscriber, uh, said Uncle Ben's death and Amazing Spider-Man actually got me a little teary-eyed. Though not really the death itself. The scene in the high school hallway when Flash goes to talk to Peter and Peter jacks him up against the locker when Flash just wanted to let him know that despite him picking on him all the time, he gets that he's going through shit that no one should have to go through. It just was really touching scene and I wish we could have seen their friendship actually developed in in those movies. Uh, I agree, Brian Roman. I I, I do. That's not the question we asked. It is the question we asked. 
It tells us why it, it hit him. Was that him. scene? Why it With hit Flash. him and why? Right. Come on. I, mean, I he answered the question. He said a different thing though. He, he said Uncle scene. Ben's death, right? Hit him the heart. It hit him, right? And why did it hit him hard? Because of the scene with Flash. Okay. I have a list. So mine is short. Do you mind if I go with? No, please okay. go because I have a list. So I, I had a, I had a hard time, <laughs> a hard time putting this together, mainly because the I couldn't think of a whole lot of stuff that actually like stayed with me and I carried around. Uh, besides, like the death of Mufasa, right in the Lion King, and it's not because of my own experience as well. Is when I watched my daughter watch it for the first time, and I I have a picture of it. Of her heart breaking, just like the Simpsons bit. Oh, you can see the so moment yeah. where her heart breaks. Yeah. Uh, so that really hurt because not just because of my experiences, but right, my, right, I had to watch right, my daughter right. go through it. Right. The other one was, and this one was really tough too. I did have Ben Sullivan from Scrubs. Gosh, that 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 hurt a lot. Yes. I had Seymour from Futurama. Seymour the dog. Oh yeah. Where oh, I've that never seen episode, it, okay. that episode is structured so you don't see him die. It's just a lot of flashbacks that make you feel all the things. all the time that he wait. I mean, just is extremely emotional. It, it really, it really. Yeah, happens. Josh, you you would cry hard Absolutely. at that episode. You would, you really no, would. I'm I'm sure I would. I've I've never watched Futurama, so yeah, I get it. Uh, and now uh, I'm gonna go Super Debbie Downer. So I hope one of you can can lift this up. Jamie Sullivan, which was Manny Moore's character in A Walk to Remember. Uh, came out, I believe, in 2001, uh, no. which was a similar time that I had lost a friend to cancer. So I was a young kid, watched that, and then just bucket o tears. Uh, yeah. I haven't revisited the movie since. Uh, that one hit me pretty, pretty damn hard. So uh, okay. Seymour, Ben, and Jamie Sullivan in a walk to remember. All right, Brian, I'm kind of heartless. So oh, it took me a long much. time to put this together. I feel the same way. I, I mean, I, I honestly, I mean, there, there's, there's, I, I've never, I don't want to say never, but I rarely, rarely cry at TV or movies. So I can't say what made me cry, but Mufasa is definitely up there. Um, I was, what the hell else was I thinking of? Uncle Ben, um, actually more so in the, in the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man than the amazing Spider-Man stuff. But, um, Gwen Stacy in comic books. In general, yep. Um, because of, I, I don't have to do movies, right? I can yeah, say no, it's fictional, whatever, yeah, whatever you want. Okay, right. uh, Gwen Stacy in the comic books that was that was a tough tough read uh, when that happened, and more so the aftermath that that was even tougher. Um, to be honest with you, the the two that I like really thought of when was the last time I actually got like a little teary eyed were actually pretty mm-hmm. recent. Um, the Flash, Nora Allen. Not the first time she dies when you see it in the first season, but the second time in season yeah. three, yes. when Barry yes. has to let, let her, her die. die. Yes, uh, yes, that was tough. That um, and not so much the character, but what it represented. I remember watching Logan and getting to the end of it, and like you know, having a great old time. Oh my gosh, this is a great movie! And then at the end of it, when he dies, realizing. Oh shit! This is the last huge time I will see Hugh Jackman play this character. Yeah, oh, that was the greatest. Movie. And I got a little teary eyed over it. I was so happy. Uh, that I he... hate you, Josh. I hope. I hope. I hope you get stunned by a bee on your nose, Josh. I can't wait till you give me your list so I can make fun of you. <laughs> Here we go. Go ahead. Okay. So uh, anyone who really knows me knows I am a habitual crier. So <clears throat> I'm actually going to try to get through this list without crying. I might not be able to. Um, the first on my list was Iris West. Christian and I watching Iris die, both cried. Just watching it together, crying. Iris? Christian handed me the tissue box. You mean HR disguised as Iris? It doesn't matter. Okay, I'm just making sure. You didn't know. You didn't know. Right, he's just asking making logistical. Sure. Making sure. Okay. It was <laughs> Iris dying, and that was not okay. Um, Laverne from Scrubs. Oh, uh. And uh, yeah. it, it, it wasn't just her death. It was Carla's reaction to her death that got me. But then they had Laverne again. Uh, I, I hear you. Um, Shelby, Julia Roberts' character in Steel Magnet. Uh, just, just uh, I don't know if it was her death or the combination of her death and Sally Field's performance. But either way, it's so sad. 
um, Jenny from Forrest Gump, and specifically him sitting at her grave. That was, yeah, that's a tough one. Uh, Tara Knowles, Sons of Anarchy. Yeah. Jax Teller, Sons of Anarchy. That hurt. I got to. Oh that was, my god! That was the song. The song. All playing, sorts of come, spoilers for Sons of Anarchy over here. Come, we, come you've join had the enough murder. Time to fucking come join watch the murder, show. right? And then, and, and then just, the oh. hands, and then the closing of the right. eyes, just unbelievable, uh, unbelievable. Uh, um, and then uh, Dumbledore. Uh, I was not happy. Obviously, from the book, it was way worse than the movie, but just, just bad. Um, Opie Winston was sudden and awful and then really if i'm like those are those are the ones that get me emotional however when we talk about ugly cry there's only two there's only two severus snape i cannot handle right now i can't handle i can't i can't even handle it but worse than that when amy pond disappears i lose my shit every time it doesn't matter how many times i've seen the episode I lose my shit every single time. Makes no sense to me. Grown ass man, lose my shit all the time. And the other part too is she lived a really long life after no, she no, disappeared. No, no, we know that. I understand, know but that, what but happened it, to the daughter? She it was, was she was taken from the daughter. Right, and that moment where she really is dead to him. Oh, he can't ever do it. It's just awful. The, the 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 fun part about this question too was not only just seeing how we can emotionally connect with some characters, but just how well. Uh, all this material and all the nerdy passions that we have, right? Can kind of channel themselves into real life events, but also just kind of overarch a little bit. And we kind of a shared connection of remember when you found out, you know, Dumbledore died. Oh my gosh, you can you can have that experience. Or when Dobby died in Harry Potter, uh, a lot of people are, are are moved by that. But you can have these moments where these fictional characters kind of bind you together. I would also say maybe anything from This Is Us. So Jack dying in, in This Is Us, uh, I just. It, it's all tough. So I, I want to never seen it. Uh, I want to hear from you fans. Uh, so you can obviously answer this question if you would like, or you can stay tuned for next week. So you can go ahead and answer next week's question. Thank you to everyone who answered this week. It means the world to us. Um, anything you guys want to add? Well, I can't make fun of Josh because he got all misty eyed during. He did. It. I'm sorry. No, it's perfect. To apologize. Now the episode does. Now the, the podcasting doesn't end here, ladies and gentlemen. As Brian said at the top of the show. Go to patreon.com slash that kind of nerd. Become a supporter for our $10 tier and you will get to listen to our spoiler cast of A Star is Born. Now, mind you, I had zero desire to see this movie and you all made me see it. So there's going to be a heck of a discussion about this movie. Also, please vote for what movie we're going to see for the month of November. Go to patreon.com slash that kind of nerd. Join our community. uh, Get early access to topics, but most of all, hear some exclusive content. Uh, I want to thank you for sharing this episode with your friends because we know that sharing is the ultimate internet currency and we thank you for your donation. Thank you so much for making us your walk around your neighborhood or your drive to work and we will see you next week. If you love comics and sci-fi and technology television, video games and fantasy well take a listen to our show I'm sure you'll see there's many points where we can agree like that Martha as a plot point was just too absurd. And Apple versus Android is a case to be heard. And that Josh Trank's new Fantastic Four was a turd. Well, welcome to the club, cause you were that kind of nerd. Reunited, cause we understood. There's one perfect thing, and sugar, this one is it. We both get so excited cause we're reunited. Hey, hey. Really good. It's really good. Very nice. Good for the soul. I, I, I'm the star verklempt, is actually. born. Are you verklempt? I'm verklempt. It was, it was very moving. I felt like he actually felt that way. He did. He does. He feels good that we're reunited. I want a dingo. <laughs> Aren't Laura you just sent me a picture baby? of a dingo. Oh, I was like... Did it eat I, a baby? And I want, she's going to feed a kangaroo. I fed a giraffe. Obviously, this isn't going to be in the show. Why is she in Australia? She's she's in uh, Australia for work. Oh. Um, actually, she's, uh, yeah. I thought she's she was doing there to pick like, up a didgeridoo. No, nah, she's not picking up a didgeridoo. She's doing boss bitch stuff. 
uh, in, in Australia. <laughs> that's that's actually what a didgeridoo sounds like. She's doing that, and 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 uh, in my mind, and very likely getting uh, seduced and stolen away from me by Chris Hemsworth is uh, how I feel. <laughs> This week is going to go for me. I mean, in all honesty, if you can score a three-way with Chris Hemsworth, I think it'd be worth it. I got to tell you, uh, actually, I had not thought of that prospect, Brian. And now that you're bringing it up and you're making it a thing, <laughs> like you're like you're thinking about it. We're talking about it. Yeah. I'm thinking I would cross swords for sure. <laughs> yeah. It's a handsome I mean, man. Chris Hemsworth, right? I'd, like, I, I'd, have, I'd, have, I'd have a full-on sword fight with that dude. Yeah, there you go. Chris Hemsworth, totally fine. And actually... Brian, mm-hmm. uh, with your addition of the potential sexual action between me and Chris Hemsworth, I hadn't thought of that previously. I had just thought about him seducing and stealing my wife away. But now that I may have sexual interactions with Chris Hemsworth, based on your suggestion, I'm thinking this is okay. Well, there you go. I hope she's having a wonderful time. I'm here to make everything better. That's what Wait, I but do. But then you have to get on a 14 hour flight. Don't you think they're just going to do it by the it's, time that it's you're actually? It's actually it's flight? actually 22 hours. 22 uh, hours. 22 hours. You think uh, they're going to hold off for 22 hours? Flight. I got to tell you, I will masturbate furiously just thinking about Chris Hemsworth <laughs> for 22 hours, and then when I get there, I can't imagine the fun that we'll have. The three of us could be amazing. Also, um. While while everyone here in America is listening to this on Monday, uh, it's Christmas Eve in Australia. I don't know if you know the time difference and how that works. I'm sorry, mm. it's Christmas Eve. Yeah, it's like three months later, and uh, and they're already at listening to episode two forty three. Yeah, the, and yeah, they've already had too much spaghetti, uh, and also they've won the lottery. They know the numbers. Uh, don't ask them. They won't tell you. It's fucking bullshit. Yeah, they signed some sort of waiver with that shit. But Laura's basically the doctor. She's living in Christmas. <laughs> right. And waiting patiently with Chris Hemsworth for me to show up. There you go. Yep. Right. That's what I my make wife everything is doing. better. I have I do. no idea what the fuck I'm doing with any of that. Oh, yeah. you know, it, it all needs to stay in. Seriously. Stay in or put it at the like. You're okay with that? where? Oh, dude, is? she's no, she's gonna freak out. Where she's gonna do fucking... I put that? Do I put the whole Chris Hemsworth thing in there? Oh yeah, oh for sure, all of it. My <laughs> gayness, all of it. It all stays. It all stays. I mean, I actually said it. I was like, Ugh, that might have been a little over the line. I. <laughs> I mean, Brian, you're. And then I was like, oh, it's this. Josh. It's not going to be in the That's show. That's the thing. It's Josh. Put, but I mean, now you're saying her. Laura's going to hear it. And make now it I have like Laura's going to Brian, your dad's going to hear it now. <laughs> yeah. Does your dad stay for the stinger? I don't know. Make it. It's fine. Make it stinger. 